you guys need water, just let us know. <clears throat> Okay, we are ready to begin our interview session with the Texas Longhorns. Um, Coach Rodney Terry and his student athletes, Timmy Allen, Marcus Carr, and Brock Cunningham. Coach, we'll call on you first for an opening statement. Okay. <clears throat> well, thank you guys for being here. Um, I'd like to just start by saying I'm just so proud of this group uh, that I got a chance and was blessed to work with this year. These guys here, more than any group I've worked with in 32 years of coaching, have really embodied, you know, in terms of staying the course and being a team. These guys were incredible teammates all year. They were so unselfish as a team, and they gave us everything they had. They really did. Every day they came in with a smile on their face, ready to go to work. Um, you know, we, we learned a lot of tough lessons through, through some losses and through wins. But, man, I, I, I can't say enough how proud I am of this, this group. And, uh, and what they've been able to do this season. They accomplished a lot. We had guys that came back and were on a mission to accomplish some great things, and we're right on the brink of being right where we wanted to be uh, to close out this season. We'll give Miami a lot of credit. Uh, they, you know, they continued to play, and um, you know, they played well down the stretch, and, and they made, made some plays down the stretch to win the ball game. Okay, Coach, thank you. Questions now? Signal for the uh, microphone and state name and affiliation. Okay, guys, uh, first question on the right aisle. Uh, Nick Moore with the San Antonio Express News. Um, Timmy, or for really any of the guys, it felt like maybe the first half of that game was a little more free-flowing, wasn't a lot of whistles. Did you sense maybe the, the tone of the game change in the second half, just, just how kind of it ground to a halt with all the stoppages? Um, yeah, it was calling it tight in the second half, you could say. Um, we was fouling early in the half and um, um, put them on the line a little bit late, so that hurt us. Okay, next question here on this left side toward the front. Cedric Golden, Austin American Statesman. Uh, Marcus, um, could you take us through the collision you had at half court with their big guy, and uh, how much did that affect you down the stretch? It was a loose ball saved by Timmy. Uh, he threw it back, and I jumped up to get it. And I guess we both jumped. His body hit my body. He kind of kneed me in my quad. He's a big, strong dude, so yeah, it hurt. But I was all right throughout the second half. OK, again on the front, on the left. Uh, Thomas Jones, Austin American Statesman. Coach, you're up 10 with about nine to go. What? You know, a couple of things would you point at that kind of led to Miami's run? Well, Miami really started trying to get downhill. They just started kind of putting their heads down, going one-on-one -on -one a little bit, trying to spread us out, and uh, really really did a good job of getting it to the paint and, uh, and getting to the foul line. I mean, they shot and made 28 free throws, you know, and we had to give them 32 foul shots. So they did a good job of really, you know, attacking the paint. Okay, left in the middle. Uh -huh. For, for Brock and Timmy, um, it's been 20 minutes since that game ended. Um, how much of the past three, four months have y'all gone on over in your head these past 10, 20 minutes, and how emotional was the seeing, seeing this season ended that, that included so many kind of ups and downs? Brock, we'll start with you. It was very, it was very upsetting. This team uh, dealt with a lot of trials and tribulations, um, but it's just – the family that we are, you know, you want to keep playing with your brothers for as long as possible. And unfortunately, there's only one happy team at the end of it. Um, wish the game would have went differently. Um, but just a lot of emotions. Um, for me, um, I'm just, it just hurts for the brothers next to me um, that I, I can't, I'm not playing with them no more. That hurts. Um, I mean, we've we've just ran through every obstacle to this point. Um, the media called us out our name time and time again. Caught talking crazy on Texas because we Texas. 
um, and we just wanted to represent the right way. And it just hurts that we can't play with each other no more, and we really grind it. It was in the trenches every day. No matter what nobody said or what opinion they had about us, what opinion they had about our team, um, we just went to work and put our heads down. So that's what hurts for me is just not playing with my brothers, but that's it for me. Extreme outside. Rodney, those those last couple minutes, a, a couple you know, questionable calls or, or calls that people are going to be talking about for a long time, what, what was your viewpoint on how some of those decisions maybe really affected those those final couple minutes for your team? Uh, again, I thought it was a well-played game. Um, again, you know, they, uh, they do a great job of crashing the glass. We do a great job of trying to de uh, defend those guys in terms of rebounds. I, you know, I don't know. I thought it was a clean – block out, I mean, clearly over our back, but, you know, at the end of the day, um, it's not the one or, or two deciding calls that decide, decides the outcome. Um, you know, you still have to play through some of the adversity uh, as you're working through games, uh, but, uh, you know, it's a little harder when it's at the end of the game. Okay, toward the front on the left. Uh, Brock, you're, you're coming back next year. Uh, the two guys to your left aren't. What did you learn the most this year from those two guys and, you know, CB and the other seniors that won't be here next year? The power of being together. You know, I've, this is my fifth year. I've been around a few teams, and this team is far and away the most connected, and it correlated to the season that we had. I mean, this group – lives together we do everything together um it's truly a family that word gets thrown around but i have no doubt this team will stick together and that's just the main thing how powerful a group of people all connected can be on the aisle here on the right yeah uh rodney you know you said you, you've coached a lot of really incredible teams over your 32 years but when you look back on it you know what what will be the the lasting memory what will stand out about this group in particular I think just the way this group handled adversity, you know, they, they, they were probably the most challenged team of any team uh, in the country this season. And, uh, you know, they just stayed the course every single day. Um, you know, we, uh, we stayed in the top ten all year long. Uh, and uh, it's a testament to these guys and, and, and their chemistry that they had all season long and playing for one another. They were truly a team. It wasn't about one guy, you know, trying to be, you know, one-man show. Any different night, we could have had a, a guy lead us in scoring. Um, guys, you know, played incredible defense for a better part of the whole year. And uh, they just embodied everything about about a team on and off the court. And, uh, and that's the thing I'm most proud of, uh, how they carried themselves. They carried themselves with a lot of class off the court and a lot of class on the court. We didn't have any issues this year off the court in terms of guys staying the course and, and really, you know, have, having laser focus on trying to – to achieve a, 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 a common goal uh, as a team, and that was to try to win a national championship. have about four minutes to go on this time frame. Uh, next question will be here on the front. Uh, yes, Rodney. Um, the guys have talked about how you've taught them so much about togetherness, team chemistry, uh, brotherhood. Uh, what have they taught you uh, in this your first year as a coach? And invariably the talk will turn to, whether or not you get the full-time gig, uh, will that be in your thoughts in the next couple of days? Well, Cedric, I think what this group has really taught me is, uh, you know, again, you know, like I told these guys, in, in the game of life, there's going to be a lot of times you get knocked down on the mat or you have to fight, fight through some form of adversity. These guys really stayed the course the entire time. Their leadership, these three guys up here's leadership, they kept this ship together all year long. When, you know, it was a player-driven – the best teams to coach are player-driven teams. This is a player-driven team. I mean, we were just alone for the, uh, for the ride in terms of trying to put the guys in the right position every day in every game. But they were player-driven in terms of really leading this team and, uh, you know, helping the young guys uh, blend in and do what they needed to do and, and, and share their experience with those guys. Um, that's what I'm, you know, I learned most about this group in terms of just embodying that leadership and, and, and that ownership and investment in the program and wanting to be as good as we could be this season. Let's move toward the back on the right. 
Coach Terry, Sam Lance with uh, Zach's blog. I've talked to a lot of your players, and they have told me about some of your sayings. Uh, you got meat and potatoes. Uh, you got laser focus. Uh, another one, start in the morning with a great day to be alive. Can you just talk about some of those things and comment on how that kind of brought this team together? Well, I think, I think you tried to set the tone with the guys in terms of uh, how hard we needed to work to try to achieve the goals we wanted to achieve for this season. And uh, when the time came for us to really have to get some really good quality work in um, on a particular day, you know, we used that as a meat and potato day. These guys, you know, they had to bring their hard hats, and uh, we really needed to work really hard that day to get better. Uh, we talked about laser focus the day before the game. I think it's really important that guys lock into the details and, and they have a really good cerebral understanding of what we're trying to get done offensively and defensively. And uh, guys were really bought into that in terms of understanding today's a laser focus day. We have to be really sharp with what we're doing, and we've got to be spot on with the details. Um, great day to be alive. You know, I just think that's something every day we take for granted. A lot of times there are a lot of people around the world that don't you know, have the – have the uh, the privilege uh, to have the health and the passion that we do to get a chance to do what we we love doing. I love coaching. These guys love love playing basketball and uh, trying to be the best student athlete they can be. So we want to be very thankful of uh, of that opportunity and uh, and that we're alive here today and uh, we have a chance to to spend time with one another. So you know that's what I kind of kind of you know try to convey and instill in those guys to to attack every day with a great positive attitude and great approach. Okay, last row in front of the TV camera. Yeah, uh, Eric Olson with the Associated Press. Rodney, um, could, could you comment just on uh, how, how bad do you want to be the head coach at Texas next year? You know, I just I haven't really had a whole lot of time to, to, to give a lot of thought to that. To be honest, I've been so wrapped up and in, in invested in my team. I mean, again, I love these guys. And not only will I just love these guys for the time I got a chance to coach them, I'm going to love them for the rest of their lives. I'll be at their – at their weddings, I'll be, I'll be with the, you know talking to those guys when they have their firstborn, and uh, you know it was all about this team, man. And I, I, I enjoyed every single day of this journey with this group, and, and I'm, I'm gonna really miss. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really miss working with this group. So it was never about me; it was always about these guys. And I love these guys. We have time for one final question. Any questions for our student athletes? Okay, here. Uh, yeah, Jeff Howe, Orange 24-7. Mark from Marcus and Timmy. I, I know it's hard to process a lot right now, but what do you guys hope the impact of this group is on this program, not just for the team next year, but you know, for years in terms of what the impact of this group can be and for the fabric of the culture of this program going forward? Uh, Marcus. Like you said, that's kind of hard to fathom and, and process, but I know that, you know, we'll forever be proud of, you know, the foundation that we laid here and obviously the season that we just had, but most importantly, I'm just proud of, like we've been saying, just the family and the brotherhood that we have and hopefully for years down the road that continues and, you know, Texas continues to be elite. It's an elite school. Uh, I'm just proud of this team. I love this team. I love what we did. Timmy? Um, we have a lot to be proud, proud of. Um, when you think about the year we had, we came in with a goal, and we knew we had to break through barriers and set a new standard. And um, I hope that we could say that we brought some, some real – toughness and fight to Texas, some griminess. Um, I just hope that carries on. One thing, when I got here, um, I remember CDC said to me, he, was, he, he just said, leave the place better than when you found it. And that's something um, that's always kind of stuck with me. And I hope that we can say that we've done that. Um, obviously, we didn't accomplish what we wanted to accomplish, but um, – the foundation we've laid, um, the culture that we've established, um, you got to have what it takes to come and play at Texas. And um, I think we take a lot of pride in what we did. Okay, we are out of our allotted time. Uh, guys, we'll let you return to the locker room for more um, interviews there. Congratulations on a terrific season. Uh, proud of you guys. So thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant.